James, James Taylor, so lovely to have you again here tonight. Thank you so much for joining us and joining the band. Isn't James Taylor amazing, everybody? There you go. Couple quick. If you don't mind me, if you don't mind me jumping in here, a couple quick questions. We're in the Ed Sullivan Theater. Absolutely a beautiful, amazing space. Storied. What did you did you beginning of your career overlap with the Sullivan show? Did you ever perform on the stage for Mr. Sullivan? No, no, I I never uh, never made the the Ed Sullivan show. I just missed that. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, how, how do how do you feel sitting in with Van this week? Oh, man, this has been a, such a great couple of days. It's fantastic. Well, it's how hard thank is that? Thank you so much. Thank like, you so much. What? For, thank, thank, thank you so much Don't for, thank for me. inviting thank me on. Thank you for being here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh no. No no. Thank you. No no no. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I don't know, I can't imagine what it's like just to jump in. I like singing and, and then I play a little bit, but I don't read sheet music. What is it like for you guys to like, do, do you lay out charts for, for the guest, Lewis? How do you do this? You know, it's, it's a bit of a mix. Some of his songs are so familiar that, that everyone kind of knows them already. Mm -hmm. And some uh, with some more specific parts, we're making notes and charts. We got cues kind of laid out and iPads and papers and chicken scratch. James, I understand you don't you don't read sheet music. No, I, I don't. I never learned to read music. Well, uh, but uh, you know, it's uh, I, I find a way to communicate. Uh, Larry Goldings came with me from from uh, just being out on. Larry the Goldings, everybody. <laughs> Woo, thank you, Larry. Yeah. So you don't read sheet music, but you've played with symphonies and stuff like that. How do you do that? How do you la di da your way with like the Boston Pops? You know, just it's exactly that. It's just uh, all smoke and mirrors. And, uh, <laughs> you've been faking it till you make it it's for the last exactly 50 years, right. huh? It, uh, now the now the cat's out of the bag. So. Uh... <laughs> well, thanks so much again for being here. Yeah, thank you. Uh, in just a moment. We got uh, we got the lovely fellas from uh, Pod Save America. We'll be out here in just yeah. a moment. Yeah. Stick around for that, <laughs> folks. Anybody who knows me knows I love TV. I love it so much. I'm inside of one right now, <laughs> working really hard so I can afford an even better one. <laughs> so I'd like to stay on top of all the latest television trends. And right now, the biggest thing on TV is the internet. Specifically, shows about the rise and fall of big tech founders. We love watching the soaring highs and tragic lows of tech billionaires. The only other place you can watch that is on Elon's Twitter feed. <laughs> There's so many of these shows out there, like, like the miniseries Super Pumped, the battle for Uber, which follows Uber founder Travis Kalanick as he turned his ride-sharing app into a multi-billion dollar company before resigning amidst multiple controversies. Most humiliating of all, after he resigned, he had to take a lift home. <laughs> take a look at this actual... Take a look at this actual dramatic trailer. I'm Travis Kalanick, and I will never back down from a fight. You know you're on your way up, and they slap a target on your back. Who's ready to conquer the world? <laughs> Start listening to the people that help build this company. I am the company! <laughs> Yelling, I am the company, is so tacky. The classy way is to simply mount your name in lights 10 stories tall on the outside of the building. Okay? It's subtle. Clearly, America is hungry for stories of egotistical, out of control tech founders, but sadly, we're running out of failed startups to make shows about. Thankfully, that hasn't stopped us here at The Late Show from making a high-octane limited series about one of Silicon Valley's most iconic disruptors. Jim? What do you think of when I say clocks? I don't know. Time? Minutes? Snooze. Not anymore. That was an heirloom. What if I told you that I could put this inside of this? You just got yourself $100 billion. Clock app for iPhone. 
sundials, wristwatches. But the days of carrying around a grandfather clock on your back are over. We are democratizing timekeeping. We should really make more time for us. I'm making time for everyone. <laughs> That is why my foundation is sending vouchers for free app downloads to underprivileged children without iPhones. What about the reports you're trying to buy Big Ben and replace it with your logo? Uh, no comment. This is the house that clock built! We have a problem. The usership is down. People are just looking at their lock screen or the upper left-hand corner of the phone. I'll handle it. Um, the FBI is here to see you. We have reason to believe your clock app is illegally harvesting people's snooze habits. You're on track to lose 68 billion this quarter. Just fix it. We're running out of time. I am time. You've changed. No, times are changing. You know, because it's clocks. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Why won't you let this go? Because everyone has a right to know if it's 5 p.m. in Cupertino. Hickory dickory dock. I am the clock. We need a name. What if we called it TikTok? What? No one's ever gonna use an app called TikTok. We'll be right back with the hosts of Pod Save America. In my mind, I'm going to Carolina. Can't you see the sunshine? Can't you feel the moonshine?